Have you noticed when using website builders, you can sometimes get caught up in a cul-de-sac? You've got so many decisions to make, not just about how to navigate and use the software, but also thinking about the fundamentals of web design and also user behavior. How are we going to get our visitors to get to the end point from the start point as quickly as possible? Well, if you're interested in that, that's what this video is all about. We're going to be using the Hostinger website builder, and I'm going to be demonstrating how you can link between pages in numerous ways. From the obvious options, like the main navigation, through to buttons, links in the text, and also using image links as well. It's going to be a pretty straightforward one, and hopefully this will give you some food for thought in terms of how to navigate from one site to the other. Before we jump in, though, I thought I'd just give you a quick top-down view from someone who's old and wrinkly and been in the industry for quite a long time now. I've been a professional web designer for 20 years, and I've had a growing appreciation for internal links in websites. Not only is this important to, as I said, get the visitor from start to finish as quickly as possible, we want them to buy, we want them to leave an inquiry or join our mailing list. That's our call to action. And so many people make the mistake when they're designing early in their careers where they will make that a more convoluted process than it needs to be. I have a product or service. Here's why you should buy that product or service. And this is what you can do next. I simplify this in our planning processes, who, what, why, where, when, how. And these are the thoughts that I have in the back of my mind. Who are we targeting? What are we putting in front of them? Why should they buy from us? Where can they buy that product or service? And when? If you're selling events, obviously time becomes of the essence. If you're offering a Black Friday deal, again, very important. The rest of this video won't be covering those aspects, but it's safe to say that internal linking from page to page within a site is really important. Different website visitors will have different approaches. Some will go straight to the navigation for the quickest route possible. Others will want the guided tour. So if we can loop back around to the same call to action, the same page from multiple angles, we are covering our bases meaning our website's going to be very simple, easy to use, and intuitive. That's what we're aiming for. Let's crack on. I've got a hosting a website here that's under construction at the moment. There's a bit of work to do on here yet, but I thought I'd use this as a perfect example to show how we can link up different sections between pages. If we go in the left-hand menu into the pages and navigation, we can see we've got an about us and contacts. We're going to need to add in additional pages so we can link these up. So we can see our range. We can create a page for that, and we'll create a page for delivery service. If we look here, I'm used to working with Squarespace with the add page is a little plus at the top here. So that's why I've delayed a little bit there, but the add page is down in the bottom left-hand corner. From here, we can add in different templates. So I'm just going to leave that in as an example for now. I just clicked on the wrong thing there. So I'm just going to go back into page settings and change the name of the page. You can see it's automatically updated the page URL as well. That's really important. I'm not sure if it only does that from the template when we change from the template page that we just added, or whether we change it to a live page that we've already edited. Either way, it's always worth checking the page URL here because that's the physical location where the page goes to and it goes after the website address. For example, if this is fintownhardware.co.uk, it would be forward slash our hyphen range. So that's why it's really important. The other reason why that's really important is Google will use that to rank your website. It's not a huge thing. It won't make the difference between getting you on page 50 and page one on Google by any means, but it's about building up good processes through doing lots of little things right. Making sure we've got the right page URL using keywords for the page that we want to land on is really important. We've changed this content now to our products, etc. But this tutorial is not about that. So we're going to jump back and we're going to add our second page. This is more of a services landing page. We would change the structure as well. But as I said, we've got a bit more work to do on that template. So we've got delivery service, and then this change the page URL once more. That's great. That's exactly what we want. We don't want to hide the page because we need it in the main menu system. But all of a sudden now we can see that that's starting to build up. Okay. So that's the most obvious way of navigating to a page is via that navigation across the top of the site. A couple of caveats. One. We're usually working with limited retail space across here. And this will change depending on the screen size. So it saved the updates to where we got to so far. But if I was to drop to mobile view, we can see we've got this hamburger menu that will expand the menu over top of the page. Someone might miss that on mobile view. They might have already scrolled down the page. And that's why it's important to have links from multiple sections of the page. We're trying to find multiple routes to the same destination. Our whole point, as I mentioned in the introduction, is to get someone to complete a call to action, whether that's send an inquiry, purchase an online product, sign up to a mailing list, or join a cause, even pick up the phone 
these options need to be presented in a way that we can jump from one section of a site where you might have a different call to action to another one. The other thing to remember as well is the better your website becomes in terms of the more competitive it is on Google, the more likely it is that someone's going to land on a page other than your homepage. So whilst you might have signposting like this on your homepage where it's very clearly defined the main services that you want to link across to, you may want to think about having a small section like this where maybe you have three or four different tabs on the bottom of most other service pages so you can cross link between multiple services. Think about the journey of your visitor, ask questions if you can find regular visitors to your website and find out why they buy from you, what services they're interested in, what products they want to purchase. And all of this information can help you get them from A to B as quickly as possible. So let's have a look now. We've got the obvious links, as I said, the main navigation. So you add the pages in there. Now we've got our range set up as a page and delivery service. We can now link up these buttons, which would be another route to get to that endpoint. If I double click on the button, we can see now that we can link to a web address or pages in our site. We can see it's handily allowed that option to link to our range. And then we can change the words in the button as well to make that more identifiable for the visitor. So that's number one. I tend to like to put in a link in the text. It costs you nothing. We could probably put a bit of custom code in to remove the underlines if we wanted to as well. Again, same thing. Jump down, select the page, and when we're working on a small site, this is even easier again. We don't want to open in a new tab. That's generally if we're linking to an external website or a PDF document. Otherwise, we'll end up with multiple tabs open across the top here, which becomes really messy and confusing. So visually, you might not like the underline. There is a way you can, in custom code, just go in and target that area and remove the underline. And I'll probably create a separate video over the next few weeks showing how to do that. Next up now, we're going to jump across. I'm terrible. I always like to just mix up jobs instead of actually doing something from top to bottom. And if you're more organized than I am, you might be going a bit crazy now just watching me jump around and doing lots of random things at the same time. But it works for me. It keeps things fresh and interesting. I could change the wording in that call to action button, but that'll do for now. And again, we're going to link to the delivery service page. Nothing too taxing there so far. Although autosave is switched on, you might want to jump in and just save that again. And we're going to go and do one more step. We're going to edit this image, go to action, and on click, we're going to open a link. And it's, as you would expect, exactly the same approach. We don't want to open it in a new tab. And we're going to do the same for the second image. Now, this might seem like a bit of a pain, as in, you know, it's a few extra clicks. And you'd be fair enough to say that, but at the same time, if we want a premium service, not just a website that looks professional, but also works professionally as well, the UX, the user interface is on point, then this is really important. We now have within this section, three different ways of getting to the same page for each link. This is ideal for the laziest viewer, and that's what we're trying to work with. I'm not saying that the individuals are lazy per se. It's about when you're viewing a website, you don't want to have to work for it. You want to just be able to browse through and get to the section that you want. And okay, we've got nice big chunky buttons here that make it very clear that you can click on these to go through. But when I see those underlined, or if sometimes I'll just press on the image because I'm half paying attention and I'm trying to get there quick. I've, I've got no patience. And that's what we're trying to work with is give us many routes to the end result via the section at the top here, these three links. And you could also put them as a mini menu into a jumbo footer. So let's go back to the editor and show you how to do that. And we're going to add an element here. And this time we're going to add a text box. So we're going to add in home. Helps if I just change the text color so we can see it easily. For some reason, that one had zero opacity. That's why we couldn't see it. So let's go and select the first color option. 
Now we we'll change that to white. Let's add our pages in, and we're just going to drop down our options. So I can either do this vertically by using Shift and Enter and creating a line break, or I can go horizontally, and I'm going to press Spacebar twice, and then I'm going to put this bar in via the keyboard. If I press Spacebar twice quickly on a Mac, it'll create a full stop. That always winds me up. So I have to just do it a bit slower. Okay, so now we've got those in place. I can drag this block across and we've got our text block ready to go. And from in here, we can add in our page links. Of course, we could put in terms and conditions and privacy policy, cookie policy, etc., into this footer menu as well. So let's now select the two pages that we've been linking to elsewhere. And we'll just focus on them for now. I've highlighted the text, gone to the link option again, and this is the same as adding it to the title above. We don't open a new tab again, following the same rules. And there we go. Both of those now are links in that footer menu. We're going to save it up, jump back to preview, have one final look. So we've got our two new pages in our main navigation. That's most important. Then we can link to them via these options here. And we've also got them followed up in the footer section. You may feel that's overkill. I don't believe that you can put enough links to cross between sections on sites. If you are having wall-to-wall -wall links on your page, it can get confusing and overkill and too much. On the flip side, I have seen so many new designers who don't put enough cross-links in their sites. They don't find enough routes to the destination. We're currently creating a funnel infographic system that will allow you to identify with your clients, or if you're building the website yourself, what the main call to actions are. And then it just makes it very clear what the main purpose of the website is. From there, then you can find as many routes to that destination as possible. In this case, it would be to have a look at a selection of the product range, also to identify that this is a delivery service, but mainly to get in touch. This would be for a physical shop with no online e-commerce features. The things like the shopping bag would be removed by the final template. Hope you found this helpful. I'd love to hear what you think. Send over a message in terms of how you use navigation links. Is there a tried and tested technique that you may have used that I've missed in this video? I'll see you next time. Cheers.